Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the L Metal Maker. Today, we are doing a little bit of chemistry here. So for a, uh, a future project, which I'm probably not going to be able to post on YouTube without getting <laughs> demonetized and gray listed and all the, all the fun stuff. Uh, so I'll probably put that on library, uh, or if you're using the Odyssey front end, same thing, same, same, but different. Uh, what we're doing here is making some bismuth trioxide and you can see here I have some uh, nice pure elemental bismuth from Rudo Metals, Rodo Metals, not sure how to pronounce it, but got a kilogram of the stuff that's obviously way more than we're going to be making, but God, what a, what a gorgeous metal, huh? And of course, this is the, uh, you know, you can melt this down and make the cool bismuth crystals with all the different colors created by the various depth of oxidation layer. Um, but we're not going to be doing that today. So, the game plan. Convert this elemental bismuth into bismuth trioxide. And basically, we're going to do that. Dissolve it in concentrated nitric acid. Uh, boil that down into pure bismuth nitrate. And at that point, we will thermally decompose it into bismuth trioxide. Now the trick is that involves pretty high temperatures, higher than you can go in borosilicate, and I don't have any ceramic crucibles right now. I'm fresh out. So we're gonna try something a little different. All right guys, so here we are outdoors. I have a uh, fan set up here to pull fumes away. Uh, obviously working with nitric acid, it's gonna produce some nitrogen dioxide fumes. And even though we're outdoors, Still, I want to get them away as quickly as possible. So, just venting those off to the side. Got a uh, round bottom flask just to recondense some of that nitric or uh, nitrogen dioxide fumes. And we have our nitric. So, safety up. Now, this nitric is a little bit of a funny story. I actually got this at a at an estate auction. Some. Uh, some old chemistry hobbyist like myself kicked the bucket and his family was selling it off and uh they just wanted to dump the stuff a bunch of different acids but the catch is it just says hno3 con concentrated nitric acid i have no idea what concentration i'm assuming it's not red fuming um just kind of going off the assumption this is 70 percent and uh and we'll see where it gets us. Hopefully it's not red fuming. I don't really want to deal with that. Before we jump to that, let's mass our bismuth. This stuff is nice and dense. All right, 10.68 grams. Put that right in there. Hopefully that'll be enough for what I have planned. I don't think, uh, I don't think we'll need too much for this experiment. I got the hot plate just in case we need to add some heat to get this reaction going. I'm assuming not. We're going to add our acid now. Fume extractor going. Now this is actually a nice old bottle. It's the uh, plastisol coated type. So if you drop it, the bottle won't shatter and the acid won't go everywhere. But it is getting pretty old. This bottle cap is at the end of its life. I can smell pretty strong nitric. Well, that looks red fuming to me, doesn't it? Shit. <laughs> so, at a freaking estate sale, I got <laughs> red fuming nitric acid. <laughs> oh, God. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess... I guess I've been wanting to make it for a while, so I have it now. That's kind of cool. God, look at all that nitrogen dioxide, though. That shit is gnarly. Doing a good job on the bismuth. And the ice packed in that round bottom flesh should help, obviously, recondense all the nitrogen dioxide fumes and help conserve nitric. Although I will be probably destroying this fan. I can't imagine this thing lasting long after this. I have it in this secondary containment just in case it were to boil over, but from the looks of it, that's 
not going to happen. And I'm not smelling any of the nitrogen dioxide. Nitrogen dioxide has a kind of unique uh, ozone-like smell, which I guess if you haven't smelled ozone, it's we're getting further away, but it's kind of a chlorine or a bromine type smell. But I'd, I'd say it's closer to ozone. Obviously, it is not good to smell nitrogen dioxide. This stuff uh, can really mess up your cardiovascular system in addition to turning to acid in your lungs. All sorts of good stuff to worry about. So here we are about 20, 30 minutes later. And we got just a little piece of bismuth still working around in there. It's uh, dissolving pretty slow at this point. So I'm gonna put it up on the hot plate. Get this moving a little quicker, hopefully. And we should be in business. You can see we're still producing a fair amount of nitrogen dioxide gas, not nearly as copious as before but just a, a tiny whiff. Just like when I Dutch oven the wife. <laughs> now I know what you're probably saying. Redneck fume extractor, redneck hot plate, state auction, nitric acid. This guy chemistry is hard, and you're right. I chemistry so hard, Nile Red laughs with envy. So as you can see now, all of the bismuth is fully dissolved. And at this point we're just driving the remaining nitric acid and water off. I'm just gonna boil it all away or slowly evaporate it away depending on my heat. And then we'll be left with a nice crop of bismuth nitrate crystals. And we are just about there. Almost there, I promise. <laughs> it's uh, forming quite a nice slurry of bismuth nitrate. See, I have what looks like a glass tube. Now, despite looking like glass, this is not, well, I guess it technically is a type of glass. This is quartz glass or fused silica. Uh, this tube here actually came out of a UV sterilizer. For quartz glass tubes, uh, UV sterilizers are a good ticket. Um, you can find replacement quartz sleeves for them pretty cheap. Um, and I mean, they're, they're nice glass. The reason they use them is borosilicate glass and I think regular soda glass uh, really don't transmit UV, well, allow UV light to pass through them very, very efficiently, whereas quartz glass is like over 99% transparent for UV. Now the other huge benefit with this being quartz glass is it can handle insanely high temperatures. I think the service temp for this stuff is like 1100 Celsius. So perfect for doing thermal decompositions in because we can just heat the shit out of the outside of this tube with our bismuth nitrate in there and decompose it. So let's go ahead, load it in here and get the torch on her. Got these little uh, sort of <laughs> redneck made scupulas. Not sure if I'm being a little overzealous trying to do the whole batch at once. We'll, we'll see how this goes. This is gonna be tricky. actually went way better than I expected. Now I have a white backdrop here, so hopefully you guys will be able to actually see some of the nitrogen dioxide given off. This like this whole reaction has just been making nitrogen dioxide at every step. Very fun, very exciting. All right, got a fan set up on low. I am gonna start hitting this with the torch. I'm starting to see some color change. Oh, there it goes. Look at all that nitrogen dioxide. Wow, look at that. Is that something else? Holy smokes. Hopefully bismuth isn't able to diffuse into quartz glass. That would kind of suck, wouldn't it? That would ruin my little tube here. grind this up and see see what it looks like all right just gonna give this transfer I was really worried I really thought we just made a bunch of uh, impure bismuth nitrate but 
now that I see it here, I think we got almost pure trioxide. So at this point, the filter is nice and dry. I'm just going to try to get as much of this off as cleanly as possible. And that's going to be quite a challenge, I think. <laughs> oh, man. I should have just bought this shit on eBay. <laughs> what the hell? All right. I realize my yield is abysmal. Utterly abysmal. Put it lightly. <laughs> but let's, let's see where we're at here. I mean, hell, I have half a gram laying on the table in front of me. 9.3. <laughs> so, despite adding oxygen, I, I don't know the exact uh, stoic off the top of my head. I don't know the, uh, I guess I could just look up the molar mass of each and figure out what it should be. But, <laughs> uh, I mean, the fact that we're taking a comp or an element, adding oxygen to it and we lost mass tells me that <laughs> my my efficiency here is pretty freaking awful as as was expected we we had several major areas of losses <laughs> notably one right in front of you now the good thing is it'll work for what i have in mind well guys there we have it just under nine and a half grams of bismuth trioxide and probably some subcarbonate in there as a bit of an impurity, or it's all subcarbonate. I have no goddamn clue. Either one will work <laughs> for this reaction. Uh, if you want to see what I do with this stuff, please give me a follow on Odyssey slash library. Same shit, different front end. Um, not a clue what I might be doing. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I would do it here, but I know it would get demonetized and YouTube would just further gray list this channel. I'm pretty sure it's already pretty heavily gray listed. Uh, anything doing with energetics or that sort of thing is heavily frowned upon. So I think this will be a pretty fun project. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And please don't forget to thumbs up, subscribe, click that little dingleberry next to subscribe. That way you can get notified when I post. And I will see you guys next time. Have a great one. Also, please consider supporting on Patreon. Keep these videos rolling. Uh, that way I can continue doing cool shit uh, without worrying about YouTube. So, thank you so much, guys. Thank you to my patrons. And I will see you guys next time. Have a great one.